Hey, I'm Eric Haugen. Here's my website, my Patreon, my Instagram. Like and subscribe to my channel if this guitar infotainment is interesting to you. All right, now let's continue talking about this is now episode five in my attempt to as linearly as possible um, explain the bits of music theory that alt rock and roots rock guitar players are likely to use. We're not worrying about jazz. Well, we might a little bit. So previously we had talked a lot about, and if you haven't watched those videos there, just you know, scroll back through my channel. We talked a lot about harmony, about scales and chords. Today, we're gonna to talk about rhythm. So just so you know, there's three essential elements of music. There is harmony, which is chords, um, that's sonics. There is rhythm, which is what we're gonna be dealing with today, which is, you know, that's, that's everything, really. It's got, stuff has to happen in time. And then there's melody, which we haven't really dealt with too much at all yet, but every song you've ever listened to, some combination of those things. So we're actually just gonna deal with 4-4 four, four time today. I'm sorry if this is very simple for you. If it is, good job knowing this. I don't know where you're at, so I'm just making sure that we understand how time signatures work. So let's see, where do I put 4-4? Four, four? Let's put it over there, 4-4 four, four time. So what you need to know about those numbers, the top number is how many? Okay, four of something. And the bottom number is what kind of something. And this is where music is, honestly, I call bullshit on it. It's a little stupid. <laughs> like you're like, four? What's a four note? Four means quarter note. So four, four time means you have four quarter notes equal a bar. So that's, you know, most music that we know is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good job knowing that if you know it already. What they might not tell you is that what makes music groove is the accents. Why don't they tell you that? Because <laughs> that's important. You know, nothing, I've said this in other videos, nothing in this world is equal, nothing, and that is true in music as well. Certain beats are stronger than others. Um, so in 4-4 in four, four time, the typical accenting pattern is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Drummers will call that the backbeat. So let's look at a song that's going to be an example of that. I'm going to leave my phaser on. I'll turn off my delay. Johnny Cash, Folsom Prison Blues. That, I think you can see that here. Let me slow it down to be a good guitar teacher. Hear that train coming, two, three, Four, rolling round the bed. Two, three, four. I ain't seen the sunshine. Two, three, four. Since I don't know when. Two, three, four. So if you don't know that strum pattern, know it. And here's what it is. I think you can see I'm holding an E chord. You know, we're starting always with a root, the E. Then we're hitting just the, um, uh, the D string and the G string part of the E. That's beat two. Beat three is now an alternate bass, the, the note that's on the A string, and then that chord hit again, so you have. Great example of typical backbeat grooving. And so oftentimes I just call this the Johnny Cash groove. Very simple thing, but if you're not good at this, you should be good at it, because 90% of being a good guitar player is being a good rhythm guitar player. Mm, that's a cool chord. So I've said this in, in other videos, if, okay, so a lot of the classic country players did speed, so I say, oh, if Johnny Cash is speed, Neil Young is weed. Here's what I mean. The next derivation of 4-4 four, four time, if those accents for Johnny Cash were hitting on 2 and 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, Neil Young came along and was like, mmm, I'm going to slow that down a lot. I'm going to accent that 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's a lot like the 70s folk rock stuff, and just a lot of stuff is gonna be in that. Let's look at the verse of Southern Man. Can I? This, like, if we're gonna do Neil Young, let's 
get me a young tone. Let's talk about that. So let me just make sure I'm not clipping. Not quite, just gotta make a little adjustment on my preamp. Okay, so we got a D minor. And now, you know, it, the, the timing is going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Here, I'm gonna put my volume back so you can hear me. One, two, three, four, one, two, that's F major seven. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, B flat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, G seven. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You could hear, while it is still four, four time, totally different feel, way laid back. So those are two essential grooves that I think everybody should be cognizant of. Um, let's do one more and then I'll, I'll detour. I'll, I'll leave the distortion on the, that's the Strymon Deco. Everybody should own one. They don't pay me to say that. I just think it's the best overdrive pedal. It's just such a problem solver. Next pattern is diddly. Um, D Bo Diddley, and I talk about this in other videos, Bo Diddley shows up in so many songs in sneaky ways. It shows up in funk and disco. You know, the, well, we're good. Hold on, wait. <laughs> the, first, we'll talk about what it is. We got, a, let's say, a G bar chord. Thing about Diddley, and it ultimately comes from, from Latin music. Um, I don't know enough about ethnomusicology to, ethnomusicology to say more than that, but it, I know that it comes from not America. So let's, let's say this is two bars of 4-4. Four, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bo Diddley rhythm is really interesting because the accenting is moving in threes. Down. Mm, 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 mm. Which gives us a side to side kind of feel. So you had Johnny Cash, you know, go. Then you had Neil Young. Now we got Bo Diddley. Um, which is, yeah, it gives us that dancey side to side feel. And that is tricky to practice because down, two, three, up, two, three, down, two, three, four, down, down. So problems sometimes students hit with this is they get this thing happening. They, they're like, cool, I got it. And then they just keep. <laughs> and just kind of get lost in it. So I will say that's, that's tricky. Songs that you would not notice to have diddly. Chain's Addiction. I love Jane's Addiction. Let me just make sure I didn't clip out on that. Nope, I didn't. Okay. Um, detour. Jane's Addiction and Pixies, for me, are such a big deal because, hello, I'm Eric Haugen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Oh, by the way, there's slow down gears over here or over here, depending on what device you're on. If I'm talking fast, boom, knock it down to three-quarter speed. Space bar pauses, arrows go forward and back. Um, for me, yeah, I'm a classic rock guy until I was around 12. So, you know, Jimi Hendrix, The Doors, all the stuff, you're, The Stones, The Beat, all the good stuff, all the, cla the kinks, uh, you know, whoever. Um, and then I heard Pixies and Jane's Addiction, 
And that was like this, this, this thing that o- opened up the world of weirdness that, that I've never left. So that's who I am, and that's what my channel is about. And if you're watching this and enjoy my other videos, you're probably like, ah, that makes sense. I could see that now. Like, yeah, you like the classic rock, but you like the weird rock too. Uh, and yeah, those two bands are like, I think, what do they call it? <laughs> Gateway drugs? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that, yeah, Jane's Addiction Stop has a sneaky, diddly thing hiding in it. Now, will I take the distortion off? Okay, let's put the deco. Bye-bye, deco. You, were, you did a good job. Switch pickups back. The last pattern, everybody's still rolling, we'll talk about before we talk about what your homework is, because I do have a homework assignment for you. Bossa Nova. I, I know that it's not actually that heard these days, but... For whatever reason, when I think about essential rhythm patterns, it's one that I'm like, no, 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 but that's one of mine that I like. So here we go. Bossa Nova, I think what's unique about it is it's instead of accenting the, the treble side of things, it's showing us what happens when you move those, those low fundamentals. So that's, you know, Steely Dan. Uh, Ricky, don't lose that number. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, so that, that bass pattern that if we have four, four, three, four, one, two, three, four, that bass pattern is going one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three. That's the defining bossa nova sound, which, yeah, Jobim, you know, which we're about to play, we'll play a girl from Ipanema, is a great person to work on that stuff. So... Then, you know, true bossa nova has the bass going, I'm gonna to switch to F to play Girl from Ipanema. So true bossa nova the, will have that going on, as well as... Oh wait, sorry, it goes... It's one of the patterns. And if, you know, you could do... But I'm not too concerned with giving you convoluted, tricky patterns to work on just because they're tricky. Let's make a rock version of that. Let's get our pick back out. Let's grab this F major seven here, which is like, if you don't do your F this way, you should. <laughs> this is like the classic. This is the way Dylan, Neil Young, everybody old school will do their F like that, or they'll even do that. Like, I don't, this one's not very good. Because everybody messes up and they go, they play that instead I'm like what's that sound like it's fine but this fits so much better but anyway so there's this guy bring your thumb around but leave that high E string open beautiful still rolling good so we'll get that bass going So now I'm just putting the back beat in. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three. So you could call that rock balsa. One, two. But now I'd like to syncopate it a little bit. By the way, yeah, the word syncopation. Oh, cool, cool, Daddy O. You into syncopation, bro? We're gonna talk about that later on. It's one of those words. It does mean a lot. It is useful, but it also sounds a little bit like tough boy music theory jargon, which I like to avoid if at all possible. All syncopation means is, oh, I'm gonna put a loud note on not a downbeat. So, you know, anything that's not, you know, is technically somehow syncopated. That's all it means. So, that's how I like to kind of fake it. The progression for Girl from Ipanema, super fun one to know. F, major seven, G seven, G minor seven, 
C7, back to F major 7, and then a quick, yeah. G7, G minor 7, C7, back home. Quick change. You could analyze that, by the way. That's key of F, that's a one chord. Interestingly enough, going up to a two, that's a seven. We'll just say that's Joe Beam being weird because that's not really in key. G minor seven is the two chord. C seven is the five chord. Going back home to the one and then a quick two, five, one. So just so you know, the two, five, one is the jazz equivalent of the four, five, one. If punk rock, ooh, ooh, ooh. Is four five one? You know that. Okay, wait. Let me do punk rock girl from Ipanema. Uh. Yeah, punk rock is four five one, or you know, classic punk rock. That's my octave fuzz. Jazz is going to be two five one. It's, it's totally the jazz cadence. So some things that your homework assignment then is, is this. T you know, if, we th if you've watched those other videos, thank you for watching those other videos. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're helpful. Um, take one of those chord progressions. All right. I'm going to stay minor just because I feel like it. Um, let's go do a 1-4, one, 1-5, one, an A minor, and... I'm gonna give it Johnny Cash drum pattern. So again, my brain would go, bam, there's my chords in the key of A minor. Okay, I'm gonna need the A minor, the D minor, the A minor, and the E minor. Johnny Cash drum pattern, one, two, three, four. Got the alternating bass, got it, bro. Put my phaser back on. things you can do. What happens if I, what I was, what was I playing around with a second ago? I think I can do Billie Jean Bossa Nova style, maybe. Yep. Cool. Yeah, so, you know, that's your assignment. You could take a progression that was one groove and flip it around another way. What's well, another fun one? What if I did lead? Okay, yeah, I can diddly Folsom Prison. Probably have to back that. Let's put on delay, overdrive, and phaser. And diddly. <laughs> Johnny Cash, Folsom Prison. Hear the train coming. I ain't seen the sun shine since I don't know when. Sounds like Sturgill Simpson now. That, that one record, right? Um, Metamodern Sounds in Country Music. Such a masterpiece. I like the other ones too, but that one I like the most. Okay, things, you can see what your homework is. Now let's just talk another couple of things that I got here on my little notes. What I'm trying to do is make, well, first things first, I'm trying to change the terminology from music theory, which puts people off. Let's call it music noticing. So much more approachable. And I got that actually from my Aunt Judy um, in San Francisco. Her and my Uncle Mark like to go out uh, bird watching, and she calls it bird noticing, which is somehow so much more playful 
and like, oh, we're just looking at stuff. Like, oh, neat, look at that. Okay, 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 neat. Um, so yeah, you'll see me use that term some more. And the other thing, there's a couple more things I'll talk about. Might as well. Um, I'm trying to get what I, what I call like T-1000 vision, like Terminator 2. Like when I play songs, I'm playing and I'm like really enjoying the notes I'm playing, but I have like a heads up display that's popping up where I can see, all right, this is going to be this chord to this chord to this chord to this chord. It's like a, it really is like a heads up display. Um, so like, yeah, if I'm playing Girl from Ipanema, click those, the, what you see me put on the screen is actually what's up here, what's going on. Um, and that is a thing that I think a lot of self-taught people and people who haven't had the privilege of having music training of some degree or another since I was like, I don't know, I played trumpet when I was, what, eight years old? So I've always been comfortable with music because um, I know that it's this thing of like, oh man, music is like this sound that's immersive and, and we float in it and you're like, it is that. But actually, to make it, it's actually quite structured. It's quite a thing. It's quite a building. You know, it's bricks, it's bricks and sticks, and uh, you know, coverings, and yeah, it's a lot like architecture. Ah, that makes sense. My brother's an architect and musician. Um, and the last thing that this is just me getting sassy now. There's extremes. We got time? Yeah. There's extremes of music theory knowledge, and I think this is why people get turned off. You got on one end the, the people who went to conservatory, Juilliard, and you know, they are masters of classical jazz or progressive shred. And like if those people are arrogant about that, that makes us be like, well, I don't want to do that. Those people are jerks. You know, again, hashtag not all geniuses. <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt. And then at the extreme other end, you got all my punk rock friends who, as a result of seeing those people, were like, well, I'm never going to learn music theory because like, those people are really obnoxious and that, like, I, that really turns me off. And so then those people will say this one. Now, again, not all of them, but I've heard this in my life. Oh, I, I don't want to learn music theory because like, it's going to mess my flow up. Um, or like, I, pl I play from the heart. Do you need to tell me that I don't play from my heart? Grr. Grr. <laughs> so for me, like anything, nothing is black or white. You want to be somewhere in the middle. You want to be open to listen um, and, and think about things. And when someone says something interesting, you can be like, huh. Like, so for me, I get knowledge from anything and anyone because I'm not arrogant about who I am. I don't hold on to like my knowledge and my guitar system as though like it's the only way. I'm always just like, what, how, how does it work? What, whatever works. So I want, yes, <laughs> I want that for, for you, that, that, that you're my, you know, we let go of either of those assumptions and that we can just be open to things and be like, and again, notice things. We'll stop there. We'll stop with Eric Rant over. Um, thank you to everybody who supports me financially in all the ways that you do. I don't put ads on my channel because I hate them. Uh, and again, I do not judge anyone for how they want to make a living in this world. It's really hard. Um, but I'm like, well, if I can avoid it, I won't have ads on my channel. And so the only ads you see on my channel are put there by the robot. Um, if I'm playing something that someone else owns uh, and that money goes to them. So I make my living by people booking lessons with me, which is super cool. They go to my website. Um, they purchase my PDF downloads or they um, support me on Patreon. So, and that's all great and I really appreciate it. I, hey, I appreciate you if you've sat through the video this long. Um, the algorithm's watching um, and you know, that helps me out too. So we'll leave it at that. Good luck. <laughs>